Despite the fact that 2022 was a relatively poor year for investors, uh, my handpicked stocks have achieved a 14.9% annual average return since they were picked, uh, dating back to 2014 to present day. So over kind of nine years, essentially. Uh, I analyze FTSE stocks, I identify the best companies, and I share that information with a group of about 100 retail investors based in the UK. I'm looking to expand that in 2023. So if you are interested in identifying or, or learning the best stocks to invest in long term, we're talking five, 10 years kind of holds uh, from 2023 onwards, then stay to the end of the show, watch till the end, and I'll share with you how you can get involved. around the corner I think is it no it's real that's a real excavator shut my eyes okay Dark in here. Let's get some lights on. Yeah. Wow, he's been. This one. Did he have your milk? He had that food. That food. That food. Presents. You've been opening loads of presents. Which one did you want to open then? Why don't you open this one? Go on then. So 2022 has come to a close and what an interesting year it has been. Uh, I started this journey of turning 4K into £1,024,867 back in 2019. And what a year to choose to do something like this. Um, <laughs> uh, well, in 2019, we had the pandemic that hit. Uh, so that was the first, first thing. I mean, uh, starting a portfolio up and adding stocks to that portfolio and just months into starting this whole thing up, the markets crashed uh, as the pandemic hit. And I went to town, I went to work, I put in, uh, I invested £11,000 into stocks um, during that crash, at a time when everyone was saying that, you know, this time it's different, we've never had a global killer pandemic spread in, um, you know, you can't, you can't compare this crash to other crashes because this is too, completely unique. Uh, I'm selling all my positions and all this kind of stuff. This is all the stuff that I was surrounded by at the time. And despite the, the, those doomsayers, um, I decided that the education that I had collected over the years, the, the training that I had done, the investors that I had studied, everything that I had learned, steered me towards 
now is the time to buy stocks. Uh, and you wouldn't just, uh, it wasn't a case of just going out in the market and just buying things left, right and centre. Uh, it was a case of really doing my due diligence on the 957 FTSE stocks that I had spent my time investing, uh, uh, analysing. And for, and working out of those 957, which of them would I want to own in the first place, as in good quality companies that are making uh, uh, substantial profits, that are reinvesting those profits back into its own growth, that have sensible growth strategies that make perfect sense to me, that I can understand, uh, that are operating in industries that look like they have a, a very good rosy future. And all of my... Um, all of my criteria that I look for, this, these companies needed to tick all the boxes. And by the time I'd gone through 957 stocks, I'd found a handful that I liked. That was it, just a handful. The rest of the companies I wouldn't touch. And of those companies that I identified, that handful of companies, only a smaller handful of those companies, only a small percentage of them were trading at prices that made sense. And this is after the coronavirus uh, pandemic had come out and and the markets had tanked even then prices were still too high for many of these stocks and so I went to town I, I put eleven thousand pounds into my portfolio and started to expand the portfolio and I started buying up as much as I could really uh, in terms of the right companies the companies that made sense and were priced correctly and within six months things had completely recovered pretty much and uh, prices had reached their uh, their pre-pandemic crash levels they'd surpassed them and things looked really good and we were in a very good position and and still are uh despite the fact that in 2022 markets have fallen about 25 maybe 30 percent and we have taken a hit from that of course um, but the work that was put in in 2019, I think, has gone very well for us. Uh, I've also managed to put some capital in this year uh, whilst prices have been reduced so that when the recovery comes, whenever that might be, uh, I see this as kind of the the, the winter. Uh, and I'm kind of sowing the seeds now so that come the harvest, uh, when the markets recover, all the hard work has been done and I'll just be able to enjoy the the profits the benefits from all of this work and so during these depressed market times i've been buying and i've been actively buying uh the right companies the right stocks at only at the right prices uh and but but getting bargains and, and finding companies that make perfect sense companies making record profits yet their stock prices are down 50 percent you know and and adding as much as i can to my portfolio uh, of these companies so that when the markets recover I should be in a really strong healthy position and certainly that's the that's the aim um, over the long term I've been analyzing stocks now since 2014 and identifying companies slowly building uh, that 957 stocks that I've analyzed now uh, you know, I hadn't I hadn't analyzed 957 in 2014. That's just when I started. And as I found these companies, I added them to my watch list slowly but surely over the course of many years, adding these companies to my watch list. And going back to the moment when I identified the company and added them to my watch list, the selection of companies that I have found, we track back to from the date that they were picked and analyzed. Uh, and identified as a company we'd want to invest in, that handful of stocks from those dates has achieved a 14.9% annual average return. So it's testament to the fact that what I'm doing is working. Uh, the criteria I'm using works very well. And that gives me the confidence going forward that uh, when the markets recover, the companies that I'm in, and I'm only invested in companies that are highly profitable, that have no debt, that are reinvesting their profits in the right way, that have the right growth strategies, that are doing everything right that I would want to see as an investor. And so, you know, it's we're picking very safe companies in that respect. But these companies can range from AIM companies all the way up to FTSE 100 companies. That doesn't matter to me. What matters is the profitability of that business, the efficiency of that business, are they, you know, the, the reinvestment of profits into their continued growth. 
Uh, and there's an entire criteria behind it, but it's been working very well. And despite the fact that uh, 2022 has been uh, quite a, a difficult year, I feel like I'm in a very strong position. And you look at the portfolio now on face value, it doesn't look particularly strong because obviously we've suffered a 27% a loss in value this year. Uh, but as but we're talking about, you know, we're at the bottom of the table right now, aren't we? We're we're uh, currently I mean, we could go lower. Who knows? But uh, and no one really knows that whether we will or won't. But even if we did, I would continue to buy in these wonderful companies that are provi providing they continue to show the right performance levels. I would continue to invest in these companies and build this portfolio up. And, you know, I'm looking at this from a 5, 10, 15, maybe even 20 year long term view. And the world's going to be very different in 20 years time. Um, I was reporting to my my clients uh, my, my members of the uh, of the, the work that I do, the, the retail investors, the hundred or so retail investors that I, I send my work out to uh, and, and reminded them 20 years ago, we had no iPhone, no Facebook, no YouTube, no Instagram, no Twitter, no TikTok, no Android, no Bitcoin, no Tesla, no iPad, no Gmail. Netflix, Amazon Prime, Slack, Reddit, Etsy, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Google Maps, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Chrome, Zoom, Skype, Spotify, Airbnb, Uber or Just Eat. None of those companies existed 20 years ago and yet they are at the forefront of uh, of industry and, 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 the, and the tech industry these days. Um, and in that time over the last 20 years, the FTSE, the FTSE markets... Uh, or the indexes have lost Boots, BHS, Cable and Wireless, Woolworths, Cadbury Schweppes, uh, Eagle Star Insurance, GA, Great Universal, House of Fraser, Ladbrokes, Magnet, MFI, Midland Bank, PO Shipping, Rank Leisure, Sun Alliance, United Biscuits. There are tons of these companies that just aren't there anymore. Uh, and some of these companies have been taken over and they're now part of some different name, still existing, just under a different name. Uh, others have just gone completely. And but it, it what it what it kind of shows me is that, you know, in 20 years time, the world is going to be a very different place. And when I am invested in these companies, you know, they might not even exist in 20 years time. And some of some people have said, well, are you not worried about that? You're not worried about uh, the takeovers, the mergers, the acquisitions, the companies no longer existing. And my honest response to that is no, of course not. I mean, look at to this year, we were uh, one of our client, one of our companies that we had on our watch list that many of my clients were invested in was Avast, the uh, antivirus software providing company. And uh, Avast were subject to a takeover by Norton in the USA. And as a result of that, the Avast share price rose quite considerably, went up 18% and Norton completed the takeover. And there was a, a deal that was being offered to shareholders with part, part cash, part stocks in Norton. We did a load of analysis. I, I provided some analysis for my clients to let them know what uh, the facts were and what Norton looked like as an investment so that they can make an informed decision. And that's essentially the work that I do is I help my clients make an informed decision based on all the analysis and research that I've done on these companies. And uh, but you, what you could have also done is not taken that deal and just sold them on the stock market, sold the shares on the stock market before the, the, the deal had finally gone through. And you would have made 18 percent return in 2022 on, the, on the, that position. And. This happened. This is going to happen quite frequently over those twenty years, I suspect, because we're only invested in very, very profitable, uh, well-performing companies that are going to be the subject and the target of acquisitions and takeovers. Because there's going to be companies that come along that love the look of this AIM stock that are making record profits, and they're going to want to come in and buy them out. And generally speaking, that's going to be good news for us because this is a well-performing company that's subject to a takeover from another company. Generally speaking, it's going to lift prices. And so if we decide we can decide to sell up and cash in and then reinvest those profits elsewhere in other opportunities um, or we can you know, stick stick with it and 
take the take the deal that is offered to shareholders if there is a deal um and these opportunities generally are very positive so whilst a lot of these companies may not exist in 20 years time uh things the um that's not necessarily a bad thing is what i'm trying to say it's not necessarily going to be a negative in fact many of these companies that get taken over and not, and won't exist in 20 years time we might own the parent company that've taken them over you might start investing in that company or we've just liquidated our position we've taken the cash uh, the profits the returns and we just use that opportunity to reinvest in other opportunities um and so no it's not a bad thing that you know a lot of these companies don't exist anymore it's just the evolution of the stock market and it's just being able to adapt to that i think is an important thing um so when i when i look at the situation and i look at 2022 and the year being down 27% i'm thinking 10 15 20 years time down the road i'm not worried that the stock market was down this year i wasn't planning on selling my shares this year anyway so why would i care what the price is it's like buying a house you know if you're going to buy a house and then 6 months after you buy the house you get a knock on the door and someone comes round and lets you know that it's valued at 20 grand less than what you paid for it's a bit of a kick in the teeth but you weren't planning on selling it anyway so it doesn't matter all that matters is what the price is worth or what the house is worth when it comes to selling it and if you plan to rent that house out for 20 years uh or live in it for 20 years then the price and the valuation of that house you don't need a quote every day You don't need to find out what the price is every day or every week or even every month or even every year. Um, you know, you don't need to find out and get it appraised, get it valued at the time of sale. And so the same is being applied to my stocks right now. I'm looking at my stocks and thinking I don't care what prices they are in terms of the value of them right now in my portfolio because it's going to be a different world in 20 years time. They're going to be valued very differently. Um the only reason i focus and keep an eye on price is for buying opportunities uh and looking for great deals looking for uh looking at my favorite companies that i've identified throughout my analysis that i love and would love to own shares in these companies and just waiting for that right price to come along and some of them are at that right price now and we're buying actively every month others they took they're overpriced and we're not willing to pay what what the the price is right now so we're waiting for an opportunity for that price to come down that may never happen with certain some of these stocks that i've identified i've never owned a share in that company despite absolutely wanting to because the price has never come down to a level that i'd be willing to pay so this is a great investment company company i would love to own but all the time the price is too high and it's overpriced i'm not willing to pay so Yeah, it's 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 the long term view, isn't it basically? Um but yeah, the 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 portfolio fell about 3% in December, which isn't really anything to particularly report. It's not particularly exciting. It went down about 700 pounds in value. Uh I didn't buy any new positions. We didn't even get any dividends this month. There was no dividends in uh, that came through in December despite holding about 12 different positions. None of them uh were paying any dividends in December and that's quite commonplace. So dividend wise we ended up uh bringing in let us see it was about 836 pounds from dividends which for the year is about a 3% total yield based on my portfolio value at the start of the year uh and the the the, the returns that we we got from the dividends represented about 3% return. So considering we don't typically focus on dividend stocks we're looking at companies that are going to grow uh exponentially grow very fast therefore hoping that the share price is going to grow at the same similar sort of rate we're not necessarily focused on particularly finding dividend stocks uh it's not part of my criteria and so to get a 3% yield across my portfolio in the year i feel quite happy with them and i feel that was quite uh quite welcome I would say and you know if that continues then probably looking at getting my first 1000 pound dividend year next year which would be nice um but yeah no additional positions taken this month uh I would just generally wrapped up in other things in life and just didn't get around to doing it um so I put some more uh more capital in in the first week of January so I will be buying some more this month uh I haven't actually put it to work yet it's just sitting in the account but I will be buying some more positions in January uh and and starting 2020 2023 off with a view to try and 
uh, try and put as much capital in as I can afford to really, because it feels like this is an opportunity. Um, now, yeah, markets could go down a bit further, but for me, I can see myself sitting there in 10, 15 years time looking at these charts thinking, oh, I wish I'd bought more in 2022, 2023. I missed an opportunity. I missed the window. I can see myself doing that. And I fear that I quite aggressively fear that it kind of it worries me that I'll be sitting there in 10, 15 years time wishing I'd done something and wishing I'd done taken more action. So knowing that now, feeling that now, I feel like, you know, this is a stupid it's, a, it's, it's an opportunity. I should absolutely be buying as much as I can whilst these prices are low. And whilst these, you know, prices are at bargain levels. And so that's what I'm going to be working on in 2023 is trying to up my my investment rate, trying to pump more money into this portfolio this year. Uh, and then, you know, if we see some something of a market recovery in 2023, 2024, maybe even 2025, um, then, you know, this means that I'm still managing to get my capital in during this window. So it'll be uh, it would be interesting to see whether or not uh, the market does start to recover. Uh, maybe we've seen the bottom already. Prices are at their lowest in, in, in September 2022. And since September, we've seen a bit of a climb. Uh, we saw the big spike in November that, that improved the portfolio by about 10 percent. We've dropped off a little bit in December, but not really much to speak of. And it's just waiting to see now. Do we, do we go back down to where we were in September or are we going to stay where we are and slowly, slowly but surely make a very gradual climb back up to those those pre-COVID um, levels, I suppose. Uh, I suspect that might be what happens. I'm starting to see some news out there that's more positive. Banks are talking about no, not raising uh, interest rates uh, to, from from uh, the summer 2023, they're predicting that they probably won't be in increasing interest rates anymore from that point onwards. Little bits of news coming out about shipping container prices falling back to normal levels, oil prices starting to fall back to normal levels. You know, so it feels like there's some progress being made and we're slowly moving back to things becoming a little bit more normal but obviously we've still got a lot of question marks a lot of uncertainty going on there's still the whole Russia Ukraine issue still outstanding it's going to be very difficult to um, to have any certainty in the markets and again essentially that's what's keeping investors away is a lack of certainty as soon as investors start to feel certain about the markets again they're going to start pumping their money back into stocks uh, right now they're not doing Doing that and that's why prices really aren't going anywhere so yeah interesting but um over the course of 2022 then we took a 27.4 percent loss in the portfolio so a relatively decent sized chunk but i remember um peter lynch lynch's book talking very much about how the stock market does this in cycles and uh, statistically, you're looking at a 25 to 30 percent drop in the markets every seven years. Now, it doesn't always play out that way. It's not every seven years, but statistically speaking, on an average, it is. Um, and so you tend to see a few of these in your lifetime and the markets will recover. They will recover from from this latest decline in price. It will be a sad moment if we don't capitalize on this moment and buy as much as we can while these prices are down because they will recover and you know like i say 20 years time things will be very different um didn't pump any more cash in didn't sell any st any of my positions didn't didn't buy any more positions so a pretty non month really not very exciting but that is it that's how things are going um so yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens over 2023 and i'll be continuing to do these updates for anybody who's interested in watching them um at the beginning of the video i mentioned that i'm looking to bring more people on into my membership group so essentially what i do on a full-time basis is i analyze stocks i analyze FTSE companies on an ongoing basis we're always keeping on top of these companies that we've looked at uh and I produce a, a weekly report to people, to my to my clients, advising them of the companies that I've identified, the performance of those companies, and also the pricing that we're looking to get in on these companies. Uh, 
Each company has its own dedicated PDF report that I've produced, which is a deep dive report, which goes deep into the company and provides, it's about a three or four page PDF that details all of the, the, the key information about that company from the last 10 years worth of annual reports that I've personally studied. You know, I go through all these reports, I take my notes, I take the key takeaways, I produce it all into a three to four page PDF. The idea basically being that you can read that PDF in five minutes and know everything you really need to know about that company. Uh, what it does, what it's all about, what its growth strategy is, how it's been performing against that growth strategy, where they expect to be in five, 10 years time, everything is in there. And we also do the pricing analysis on that company. So we'll identify these companies, but also I'll be letting you know uh, what price you want to be buying that company at and what price you want to leave it alone at. And what this does is that saves you a massive amount of time because you don't have to do the analysis yourself. Uh, I also have 10 years worth of experience of analyzing these companies. I have a great track record when it comes to getting results. I've already produced this information for 100 plus other people, including myself. We're all using it together. If you're wanting to invest better and make better investment decisions for your portfolio in 2023, then this might be perfect for you because uh, signing up, it costs £57 a month. I'm looking to bring more people on in 2023. And uh, once you signed up, you get access to all the reports, all the information all gets sent to your inbox. Uh, very little time investment for you. The whole point is that it saves you time, but also provides wonderful returns and steers you away from the companies that are going to sink your you're going to sink your money into. There are many stocks out there that I would recommend you avoid. Uh, and I, I share all that information. And so you can make a far better, more informed decision about your investments and have a much healthier portfolio than what you might have right now, starting from 2023. And, you know, in five, 10 years time, you'll be in a much stronger situation. If that sounds like something you would want to get involved in for 2023, I am opening up my, my client base, bringing some more people in. Uh, if you are interested in getting involved, then you just need to go down to the description underneath the video and there's a link to join the Invest Better uh, stock picking service. Go there. You don't need, There's no obligation. You can go and click on that link and you can go and read up about what's provided in that. Uh, but if it is something you decide you want to get involved with, you can sign up from that link. And as soon as you sign up, you'll get your welcome pack sent out to you. I will be in touch with you to say hi and introduce myself and... Uh, talk to you about your goals and aspirations and what you're trying to achieve with your portfolio and we go from there essentially so if that's something you want to get involved with link is in the description thank you so much for watching guys i hope you're enjoying this particular series on the channel if you are please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already thanks so much for watching i'll see you soon cheers guys